Good morning everybody and welcome to today's morning devotion and um, I just wanted to share a wee something with you today about this guy called Barnabas in the Bible and um, Barnabas actually meant son of encouragement and his real name was Joseph um, but he was known as Barnabas because of how he acted and how he behaved like that towards people and um, you know just in these days encouragement is something that we could all do with a bit more of I think anyway and um, there's actually this little uh, photo that I found online that I used for my profile picture for a while um, saying that, you know, be an encourager because there's plenty of critics out there already. And um, I used to think that encouragement is a bit like the ice that melts away. You know, we always need more and more of it because it just melts off. And so it's a great thing to do is to be an encourager. So um, I've got a, a sort of profile of Barnabas in the study Bible I was going to read you out. But before that, I just wanted to read you some scripture to do with where we first hear about Barnabas in the Bible. And the first mention of um, Barnabas was in Acts um, chapter 4. And this was a time when, after Jesus had been crucified, risen again, ascended back to heaven, um, and then the believers were left with um, the Holy Spirit to get on with spreading the, the word and um, you know the early church was being formed and so uh, the first mention of Barnabas was before Paul who we know did a huge amount of work spreading the gospel as well and wrote many letters that we have in, in the Bible and um, before Paul had become a believer um, Barnabas was already part of those believers and already an active part and we can tell that because in uh, Acts 4, uh, let me just get it for you, verses 32 and 34 to 37 it says this, at that time all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own but they shared everything they had. Um, so that there were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet <clears throat> and it was distributed to anyone who had need. And here is Barnabas. Joseph, <clears throat> excuse me, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. And... Uh, so the next thing that happened um, was that uh, Saul of Tarsus, who later became known as Paul, Saul at this time was basically persecuting the, the early church, the new believers. Um, he felt that that was the right thing to do. And in fact, he was involved at um, Stephen, who became the first martyr in the church. Uh, Saul was the one that held the cloaks from all the people that were stoning him. And uh, But then he... Um, in Acts 9, we're told the story of how Saul um, had this dramatic encounter with Christ and uh, was blinded for a time and came to realise that um, it was Jesus that he was persecuting by persecuting his early believers. So he had a complete about face uh, and um, had a dramatic new life. But um, let me read you out this sort of section of scripture because again, Barnabas is instrumental here. Uh, because, you know, it had become known that this is how Saul was behaving. Uh, and so what happened was that Saul appeared in Jerusalem and said, I'm a new man. But all the, the believers in Jerusalem were a bit frightened. Of course they were, because they'd heard these terrible things. One, <clears throat> one scripture talks about Saul breathing out murderous threats. And so, you know, here comes this guy to say, hey, guys, I want to be part of your group. So, um, but it was Barnabas who helped. Let me tell you the story. It's in Acts 9 verses 19 to 31 and this is what it says. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. This is after his conversion. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. 
That's another story. That would be an interesting one to have been part of, wouldn't it? Um, when he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul, on his journey, had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. And just, you know, if it hadn't been for Barnabas being bold enough to take Saul, who later became Paul, and present him to the Jerusalem believers, you know, we don't know how that would have gone. Um, but uh, he did, so that was good. Um, and uh, there, Barnabas makes further appearances uh, throughout Acts, and also he's mentioned in a few of Paul's letters, and he was a, a companion of Paul's on many of his journeys. And there's one uh, section in Acts 11, verses 19 to 30, which talks about an instrumental time that Barnabas was involved, and I'll just read you that out, and then I'll, I'll tell you what the character study says about him in this Bible. Uh, so it says this, Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, uh, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. So we see there that Barnabas was very involved in this new a uh, little enclave of believers that had sprung up in Antioch and not only was he um, there, uh, potentially he brought a lot of them in just by his gift of encouragement, not only that, but he then went for Saul, Paul, and brought him back so that they could um, give these new believers a good foundation, proper teaching. And then when there was this um, problem with the famine, they just stepped up to that mark as well and were involved in the, the collecting of resources to distribute to those that were in need. Um, so, you know, quite a guy. And uh, let me just read you out um, what it says in this uh, little study of him here. <clears throat> every group needs an encourager because everyone needs encouragement at one time or another. However, the value of encouragement is often missed because it tends to be private rather than public. In fact, people most need encouragement when they feel most alone. A man named Joseph was such an encourager that he earned the nickname Son of Encouragement or Barnabas from the Jerusalem Christians. Barnabas was drawn to people he could encourage and he was a great help to those around him. It is delightful that whenever Barnabas encouraged Christians, non-Christians flocked to become believers. Barnabas' actions were crucial to the early church. In a way, we can thank him for most of the New Testament. God used his relationship with Paul at one point and with Mark and another to keep these two men going when either might have failed. Barnabas did wonders with encouragement. When Paul arrived in Jerusalem for the first time following his conversion, the local Christians were understandably reluctant to welcome him. They thought his story was a trick to capture more Christians. Only Barnabas proved willing to risk his life to meet with Paul and then convince the others that their former enemy was now a vibrant believer in Jesus. 
we can only wonder what might have happened to Paul without Barnabas. It was Barnabas who encouraged Mark to go with him and Paul to Antioch. Mark joined them on their first missionary journey, but decided during the trip to return home. Later, Barnabas wanted to invite Mark to join them for another journey, but Paul would not agree. As a result, the partners went separate ways. So he wasn't just a yes man, Barnabas. In Barnabas with Mark and Paul with Silas. This actually doubled the missionary effort. Barnabas's patient encouragement was confirmed by Mark's eventual effective ministry. Paul and Mark were later reunited in missionary efforts. As Barnabas's life shows, we are rarely in a situation where there isn't someone we can encourage. Our tendency, however, is to criticise instead. It may be important at times to point out someone's shortcomings, but before we have the right to do this, we must build that person's trust through encouragement. Are you prepared to encourage those with whom you come in contact today? And uh, it's just a wee list of things here. His strengths and accomplishments. He was one of the first to sell his possessions to help the Christians in Jerusalem. He was the first to travel with Paul as a missionary team. He was an encourager, as his nickname shows, and thus one of the most quietly influential people in the early days of Christianity. He was called an apostle, although he wasn't part of the original twelve. And lessons from his life for us. Encouragement is one of the most effective ways to help. Sooner or later, true obedience to God will involve risk. There is always someone who needs encouragement. And I just think that is so true. And, uh, you know, especially in these days when we are surrounded by so much around us that is discouraging. And just as this goes on and on and on, it does really wear us down. Um, I'm feeling that myself. And I know from what I've heard from other people that I'm not the only one. And, um, you know, please God, we'll see a bit of a, a, bit of a, um, a relaxing of some of the restrictions very soon. But regardless of that, you know, we need encouragement one to another and um, that can be done in so many ways. And in particular, we can be praying for one another. And let's do that now, shall we? Oh, Father, I just thank you so much for Barnabas and for the example of his life and a ministry. And Lord, thank you that we can see that encouragement is not a small thing. But Lord, we can demonstrate encouragement in small ways. I do pray, Lord, for each and every one of us that you would help us through your Holy Spirit today, Lord, to see how and where we can encourage someone, Lord, where we can spur someone on to good deeds, Lord, where we can just bring that little bit of strengthening to those that we come in contact with, Lord, whether it's even by a phone call or a letter, um, a kind word somehow or other, Lord, help us to spread that encouragement, Lord, among your people today. And I do pray, Lord, that you would strengthen us in these days so that we could look ahead, Lord, to the days when we'll be out of this situation. Lord, even um, in the midst of this, I just pray that you would continue to open our eyes to what you are doing in these days, Lord. You haven't gone into quarantine, Lord. You haven't uh, had to restrict yourself from us. And we just praise you and thank you for that. Lord, thank you that you will always lead us, you'll always guide us, and that you will always encourage us through your Holy Spirit. May that be so today, Lord, in each and every one of our lives, for Jesus' sake and in his name. Amen. Well, God bless you all today and we'll see you the next time. Bye for now. <music>